Hello and welcome to another Wilson 18 tutorial. In this video we're going to be talking about SSH keys and how you can use them to log it into um, a server running SSH without actually having to enter a username or password. Um, you may choose to have it with a password but it should actually make this a bit more secure. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to first need to download something called Putty. Putty is a program that we'll use to connect to the actual um, server. So let me just quickly go and find that. So what we need to do is we need to type in putty in Google and then we can go to putty.org. So we go to here and then click here and the package we need is this one here. So this one. This is because it comes with a few other different packages. So that is PuttyGen, that one, and Putty. So best to go ahead and install this. So we can just go ahead and download that. And we can just go ahead and complete the install. So okay, once we've done that, we can then find it by going to the start menu or programs, putty, and then clicking on putty. Yeah, so we should have something that looks a little bit like this. So let me just quickly make sure we have the server up and then we can carry on. Right, okay, so um, as I mentioned before, the, or as you should be able to tell from the title of this video, this is going to be a um, CentOS 6.5 server so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to know the IP address so I'm just going to enter the IP address here um, one thing I will say is that you can feel free to attempt to use this because as soon as this video will be done server will be taken offline and then it will be recycled for something else so good luck finding a use for the IP um, so let me just find out what the end one is so 68 yeah. and the port is going to be 22 and what I'm just going to do as well is just change the size of the font and the colour, just make it a little bit easier to read for you guys. Colours, foreground. Right, again, okay, we can actually save this session as well. So let's just call it. SSH tutorial. So we can just save that and then we can click open. And you should get a warning like this. This is just because it's the first time we've connected to it, so it doesn't know the actual um, key for that. So we can just ignore that. So we can type in the username root and enter our password. That's wrong. Right, okay, so once we're in, let's just clear the screen gives a bit more room to work on. So what we need to do is we need to follow this tutorial. So let me just find that for you. So if you go to wilson18.com and go to CentOS and this is the video or the guide we're going to be following. So I'll just have that open in another window so you don't have to see that all the time. So the first command we need to do is type in ssh-keygen and what this will do is this will generate a set of public and private keys so that we can use these in the future. So you don't want to enter a file name here so you can just ignore that. Obviously if you're going to be doing this for multiple root logins then that's fine you can go and enter one that's fine. Um, actually before we do that let me just pause this. Right sorry about that it looks as if um, I didn't reinstall the operating system, so let's just go like that well, again. So we haven't entered a, you, uh, a name for the file here, so then it'll ask us for a password. If you want to have it so you have to enter a password to connect to the server, enter that here. If not, leave it blank. I'm not going to be using one, so I'm just going to be clicking enter. And then you should see it draws like a little pretty picture, which is great. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually have a look at the different files we've got so the way we're going to do that is we're just going to navigate to that directory we're going to change so we're going to navigate 
navigate to the SSH directory where they're going to list everything in it we're then going to change the permissions on everything in this directory I'll change permissions of the actual directory itself and then change the permissions of the files in that directory so you can do these as separate commands that's all they are but just for the to save a bit of time put these all in the same line with um, a semicolon at the end so there we are so these are the two files that's generated this is the private key this is what we're going to be using so this is a bit which is private to us the other bit is the public key so this is what is going to be stored on the server so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the contents of that public key into the authorized keys file you should see we haven't got one here so we're just going to create that um, but we can do this all in one command which is using the cat command so we're just going to cat that into that so if we click enter that should create it so if we just click ls or type ls you should see it's now there um, and if we actually cat that out there we are so that is what the public key looks like so that's all we needed with that so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install nano which is a text editor and then we're going to edit the ssh configuration file this is just so that we can actually um, use these keys because by default it won't be set up to use them so we just need to enable that so that shouldn't take more than a couple of seconds right so we're in this file now so what the line we need to look for is let's have a look this bit here so at present this is commented out but this is just saying this is where the authorized keys files will be included so this is just saying in the users directory in a file called authorized keys so we can just control a and enter to save and then control x to exit the next thing we need to do is actually have a look at our private key so we need to make a copy of it so the way we can do that is by typing in nano and then id underscore rsa to view our key and this is our key so the way we can actually copy this is if we highlight it like i've done here and then click on the right mouse key it'll then paste it in line by line as you can see we don't need two keys in this so we can actually just exit so control x and then n so this means that we've copied it to our clipboard and then we've just kind of got rid of that copy um, so what we need to do now is we need to go into uh, notepad so let's just find notepad oh. So we've got notepad here we can just paste it in so as you can see it's copied and pasted it so what we can do is we can just save this so we can save it as whatever we like so let's just say root key in our documents okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to go into that putty gen let's find that so putty and then putty gen and then we need to import key so this is where we find um, our documents root key so this is our key that we've got so if you've entered if you did it so you have to use a password to get into it enter your passphrase here and confirm it again here if not you can just click save private key and that should basically say now you sure you want to do this without a password blah 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 yes and um, so we can save that again so let's just call that root and that should have saved our key so what we need to do now is we need to um, go back into putty so let's just open up putty hither oh no didn't mean to do that my apologies um, let's just open up another version of putty so as we said we saved this before and what we're going to do now is we're just going to alter this to root and then at this is basically going to say we're going to be using the root user at this IP so this is just so it doesn't ask us again for that username and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to ssh here then go to auth and then click browse and actually click on that private key we created so if we then go back to the top and click save 
then the last thing we can actually do, which I didn't mention in the tutorial, so I'll go and edit that, is we need to restart the SSH server. So sshd, nope, service, sshd, restart. So there we are. And then now we, what we can do is actually open this file up, or open our thing up, and it should see you there, authenticating with the public key. Um, so what we've done is we've basically just given permission to ourselves to log in and out without using a password which is great so i hope this video has been useful it's something that can be used to greatly increase security because if you're not relying on people's passwords um or well passwording the files but meaning that they can only log in if they provide this key um it's a bit more secure because obviously it's not going to be as susceptible to people just trying multiple different kinds of username and passwords so it does save a little bit of time as well because obviously you're not having to enter your password all the time so as i said i hope this has been useful please do make sure to subscribe if you did think this video was useful so you can click this button here click it click it you know you want to um and please do make sure to like and dislike appropriate to your feelings on this video and if you've got any questions please do go ahead and leave those on the forum and i'll make sure to get back to them as soon as i can so thanks for watching everyone and have a great night goodbye